Okay, so sexual intent. So in an interaction, you need to understand that if you're not showing sexual intent, if you're not show what is sexual intent? It's, it's communicating your sexual interest in the girl, to the girl. Okay, if you're not demonstrating that, then basically it's you go, you're going to risk coming across too friendly, too nice. She doesn't know what you want. What do you want? She doesn't know why you're there. Um, what do you want from her? What's the purpose? And then randomly you thinking, okay, I want to sleep with her, but she, this is just a friendly conversation. Um, how do I make this happen? What, how do I do this? And you need to realize that for actual sex to happen, you need to have and you need to communicate sexual intent. Otherwise, this is as a PUA, as a cold approach pickup. Otherwise, you can be with the girl for a year. Um, you just chill with her. You hope that at some point in the relationship, maybe she just wants to sleep with you. Okay, but if you actually want to make it happen proactively, you have to communicate sexual intent. So let's start with actual the one one the one way sorry the one way verbal escalation. So this is verbally. Okay, we're starting off with the verbals. So what do I mean by this? Lots of guys don't show intent verbally. Okay, we're going to go to the non-verbals afterwards. But guys don't show intent. They don't show intent verbally. So what you need to do is understand that. If you call the girl cute, okay, lots of guys will say, oh, I called her cute, so I showed my intent. Okay, that's, that's level, that's just starting off. You need to understand that there's different levels. I want you to see it like a ladder. Okay, let's say, for example, level one is calling her cute. Level two, calling her attractive, level three, sexy, level four. Okay, let me just stop here. So it's so, so calling her sexy. Level four, overall body parts. She's got an amazing, okay, we're going to go into all of this. Level four, overall body parts. Level five, specific body parts. Level six, sexual body parts. Okay, level seven, actual sex. Okay, we're going to go into this and what I mean by this. This is all verbals. Level one, I'm telling her she's really cute. Maybe a minute later, I'm telling her that she's actually super attractive. Maybe a minute later, I'm telling her, you know what, you're actually really sexy. I'm going into how to do this. Maybe a minute later or whatever, I'm telling her now, overall body, you have an amazing body. Okay, uh, later, I'm telling her, you have great legs. You have great... Um, whatever, okay, I'm, I'm choosing specific body parts. Then, a little bit, a bit later, sexual body parts. I'm thinking of kissing you, you have amazing lips. Okay, then actual sex. I'm thinking of what I would do to you if I was alone with you right now. Okay, so we, we're getting deeper into this. All I'm showing you here is that there's levels. Most people, they stay at level one, telling the girl she's cute and expect her to know that they expect the girl to know their intention. Okay, you need to pr uh, proactively go up this verbal escalation ladder. So you need to have your own way of saying this. How are you going to tell her that she's cute? You can't always just say, you're cute, you're sexy, you have an amazing body, you have amazing... Uh, you can't just do that, but there needs to be specific ways. You can do some of these, like uh, this one, you're cute, you can just randomly say it. You know what, I think you're cute, you're adorable. Okay, it's, uh, you're also very little and cute, whatever. But then we get higher up. I just have to tell you something, you're super sexy. Like out of every girl here, they have this kind of um, cute thing going, but you're cute in a sexy type of way. Like you're really sexy. Okay. Then we're getting into overall body. You must do yoga or something like that because your, your body is just insane. Okay. You can see that I'm proactively showing more and more intent. Then, specific body parts. I just have to tell you that your legs, like, you might have the best legs in the club. Not just the best, like, the sexiest. Okay, like, uh, I just found them, okay, whatever. Okay, uh, you're going to come up with your own lines. I just want to give you, and then, uh, 
then uh, sexual body form. So you know what your lips or whatever your boobs are turning me on right now. Like I'm thinking of kissing you or whatever, any of that stuff. Like then actual sex. If I was alone with you right now, you don't want to know what I would do to you. Okay, and you can keep going deeper and deeper. Um, you can keep going higher and higher and actual, actually explain the sex, like explain the experience. If I was alone with you right now, I would pin you against the wall, okay, hold, grip your hair, pull it back while I'm kissing your neck. Okay, start softly and then go harder and harder. And go, like you can, you can actually explain it, but I mean, uh, King was doing some the other day. Okay, but you, um, you want to proactively go up the ladder. Okay, what do most people do? They start and they stop at level one. And then they say, you know what? Um, she doesn't know that I was into her. Of course she doesn't know because you, you're not verbally escalating. Okay, make sense? So you, you have to go up the ladder, but you need to have a ladder. Okay, I'm giving you a rough indication of what a ladder is. You need to come up with your own line. You need to come up with your own ladder because if you're just telling her she's cute, and that's your verbal escalation ladder, you better have very, very good nonverbal. Extremely good, which we're gonna get into eye contact, sexual nonverbal. Um, and if you don't, you better have a verbal escalation ladder to back that up, to compensate for your potential nonverbal weakness. Okay, so let's, uh, so I want you guys to come up with your own, okay? Don't copy my lines. Come up with your own lines that resonates with how you'll say it. You need to know the words. Like the way I see it is cute, attractive, sexy, body, lips or boobs, okay? Actual sex, okay? But then you need to come up with a way of how you're going to say it. And then all you need to do in set is you need to think, where am I on this verbal escalation level, okay? I've done level one, I've called her cute, okay? I know what I need to do. I might be scared, I know I need to get to level two. Okay, what's my level two line? Okay, I know it, I just need to say it. Okay, I'm on level two, I need to show more intent. Still, I still need to go way higher up. I don't want to stop here. All I need to do is say my level three line. If you get to level six or seven, she 100% is going to know that you sexually into her. So if she's going to know that at level six or seven, all you need to do is get there. Okay, you just need to get there, but you can't go from level one to level seven because then it's like, okay, this guy just wants to fuck me. Um, it's too, it's too sudden. It's too drastic. It's too much intent without actually going up the ladder slowly. Okay, you can't. That's why you can't just walk up to the girl. You know what? I just want to fuck you. Okay, it won't work. But if you tell her she's cute, it's again. It's also not giving your power away. It's not telling her she's got an amazing body. You're not going up there and just saying your body is amazing and that's why I'm talking to you. Okay, so you're starting off slowly. Everything else is happening at the same time. You're getting investment. You're uh, using all the, the hooking material that we did yesterday. And in between, you keep verbally escalating. Lots of people don't verbally escalate. Number one, I mean, fear of rejection. But you need to understand Firstly, with fear of rejection, you need to understand, even if she rejects your intent, it's not necessarily bad. If she says, if you tell her like, you know what, I'm thinking of kissing you right now. And she's like, don't do that. Okay, well, that's funny, haha, but she doesn't kiss you, whatever. She still knows, she still sees you as a sexual threat. Okay, you want that to happen. You don't want to hide your sexual interest. She needs to see you as, basically the way you want to see it is, if... If she was, if you and her, yeah, you are, okay, you're very happy because you verbally escalate, okay, and then yeah, she is, she's also very happy because you're verbally escalating, and uh, so here you both are in her head, if, let's say I'm with her, and I'm, like the way I see it is, if I'm with her, and randomly in this moment, we're in a bedroom alone, like let's say we just transported to a bed. If I just pin her on the on the bed and start trying to sleep with her, is she going to think, what the fuck is this guy doing? 
okay, is she going to think, what, what on earth is this guy trying to do? If she's thinking that, then my sexual intent doesn't come across. She needs to know, like, of course, if this guy was alone with me, he's obviously going to try and sleep with me. Okay? He's going to do it in a way that he doesn't imp impede my comfort level. But it's not like, no, why? That would be so creepy and weird. And this is a friendly guy. That would be the most awkward thing. And she needs to understand that, yes, if I was alone with this guy, there's a possibility that he would try and sleep with me. Not if I was alone with this guy, there's a possibility that he would have a conversation about his, his future. Okay, so you want to make it very clear to her that what your sexual intent actually is. And now there's more, there's way more to this. You need to understand whenever you go up the verbal escalation ladder, as you go higher and higher, you're increasing sexual tension. Okay, so you're increasing sexual tension the higher you go. You can see there's not, not, there's not much sexual tension being created when I tell her she's cute. Like if I tell her, oh, you're very cute. Okay, that's, there's not much sexual tension. Okay, the goal of verbal escalation is to increase sexual tension. Okay, that's the goal. And you can see that when I tell her, you know what, you're very cute. There's not much sexual tension. But when I tell her, you know what, I'm thinking about kissing you. The higher you go up, you can feel, you can see there's more sexual tension. So... What I'm trying to do is increase the sexual tension. But what's important here, the higher the sexual tension goes, it's also your responsibility to release, release the tension. Because otherwise it could be awkward for her, it could be uncomfortable. So, the more you increase the verbal escalation, the more you need to release the tension. What's a release? It's somewhat, it's disinterest. Okay, so if I tell her, you know what? you've got such kissable lips, I'm thinking about kissing you right now. But that would never happen. I barely know you. Okay, maybe take me, take me on a date first. Okay, we'll get into questions just now. So, you, um, the higher you go, the more tension uh, is created, the more you need to release. So, um, you have absolutely amazing boobs. Like, uh, I just, they're just turning me on so much. Why are you doing this to me? Like, I'm just trying to have a normal conversation here. Okay, this is going too fast. Let's slow things down. Okay, the reason why you want to release is because, for one simple reason, whoever releases first has the power. If she releases, if you say, look, I'm thinking about kissing you, and she's like, well, you can't kiss me. I barely know you. Now you need to be the one to say, oh, no, um, don't worry about it. I'm not going to yet. I, I also want to know you first. Okay, it's very chody. If you're the one doing the releasing, which the girl 99.9% .9 of the time is used to doing, if you're the one that does it, like, you know what, I'm thinking about kissing you right now, but I can't. We're not doing this yet. Okay, you want her to say, why not? Well, why couldn't I? Why, what, uh, what, what's wrong? You want her to be the one chasing. What generally happens is the guy will communicate his intent, the girl will shut down his sexual intent, his sexual advances, and he will have to be the one to justify himself. But we want to do the opposite. So, if you tell her, you know what, you're actually super, super sexy. Instead of her saying, slow down, like we just met, let's still have a conversation. And then you have to apologize and say, oh no, yes, I agree. Let's have a conversation. Instead of that, you know what, you're super sexy for a blonde. Okay, that's a release. It's disinterest. So you're using your push-pull as a release to your sexual intent. Now, something deeper here at times firstly you want to let the sexual tension build just enough that it actually impacts the interaction before you release it so you don't want to say you know what you're um you know what you have such kissable lips but you can't kiss me okay because then you destroy the tension before you even let it simmer you want to let it simmer you want to let her feel the sexual tension and then you release before her so you know what you absolutely have an amazing body. Your body is just it's turning me on. But this would never work. You're too young for me. Okay, if you release too fast, it's as good as not even doing it. Okay, because the point of this is not to say a line. The point of it is only to create sexual tension. Okay, so you need to leave it there. But again, don't skip levels. If you're starting out on this, don't skip levels. Tell her she's cute. You don't have to release on level one. Why don't you have to release? You don't really have to release because 
there's barely any tension on level one. You can feel the difference. If I tell her, you know what, you're super cute. I don't have to say, you know what, you're super cute, but uh, we would, this would never work out. Okay, you don't have to say that in a sexual tension lens. You don't have to say that. But if you want to, you can still do it under a push-pull. You know what, you're super cute for a blonde. You're super cute for your age or whatever. You can do that. But under a sexual tension lens, if you're looking at it through this filter, there's no sexual tension being created. So you don't have to release if you're just isolating sexual tension. The higher you go, the more sexual tension, the more chance there is that if you don't release, she will release. If she releases, you're the one chasing and justifying yourself to her. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's tough because if you say to her, you know what, I'm thinking about kissing you. And she releases and she says, I don't know you well enough yet. Now she has all the power. And what do most guys say in that situation? Um, they might try to recover and say, oh no, but I don't know you well enough yet. Okay, they're trying to uh, do their own release after she's released. It doesn't work. She's got the power. When the girl has the power um, in these interactions, look, um, it's very, very difficult. What does the power mean? You chasing her. Okay? If you have to chase her for a result, what does she have dangling over you? She has sex dangling over you. I've got this big thing that you want. You told me you want it. I know you're desperate for it. I've got this big thing that you need. And I've got all the power. You basically want to tell her, that's what, why we're releasing, your sexual power that you have isn't affecting me. It'll affect every other guy, but it's not affecting me. I can live with building the sexual tension and not allowing you to have sex just yet. Okay, so that's like the, the mindset. So it's important. Firstly, you need to have your, your lines for the ladder. You need to have them. If you don't have them, how can you climb up the ladder? You don't have anything. Secondly, you need to have your releases. Okay, what's an example of a release? A push-pull. Okay, interest, you're really sexy. This interest is any form of release. Okay, that's the first thing. Now, understand that at some points, this is where it gets a little bit uh, more advanced, at some points, you might want to let the sexual tension just stay there. You don't release. She doesn't release either. There's no releasing happening. You just basically, and we'll get into the non-verbals, but you're basically just telling her, you know what, um, I'm, I'm thinking of doing such naughty things to you right now. Okay, and you don't release. She feels that sexual tension. It's actually, it's there. She doesn't want to release. Okay, you also don't release. And you're just leaving that sexual tension there. And you can see, like, um, the closer it actually gets to sex, the less you have to release. Because if you release, the closer it gets to sex, then it shows nervousness, it shows that you're uncomfortable, it shows that you're scared. At some points, you don't release sexual tension, okay? Um, it's very, it's a very beta behavior, okay? Very, very beta. If you, the closer you get to actual sex, the less you release, okay? Very important. Like, just imagine you're on the bedroom, you're in the bedroom and you're like, you're saying, you know what, um, and you're actually both naked, I want to fuck you right now, but you're too young for me. Okay, um, now look, there's, you can potentially do those things, but there's, if you're just isolating and just looking at this, it's a risk. It's, it's a risk in terms of the way she perceives you. Okay, because you're always trying to, it's, you, at some point you should want sex and she should feel that you want it. Okay, you don't need it, but she needs to feel that you want it. Okay, otherwise it's, uh, it's a bit weird. Like this guy doesn't want it at all. Okay, could he be gay? Could he just be that he's not into me at all? Okay, the, if you just keep releasing, it's like either you're not into her or she's got no room to keep chasing. You need to understand the next which fits in with this, which is um, catch string theory. So you need to understand that. Okay, so. Here's my cat. <laughs> okay. So there's, there's my cat. And <laughs> that's a cat. And here is the ball of string. So you put the ball of string too close to the cat. The cat jumps. He wants the ball of string. He gets the ball of string. He plays with it. And then he gets bored. You put the ball of string too far away from the cat. He jumps to try to get the ball of string. He can't get the ball of string. He gets bored. 
You put the ball of string close enough that sometimes the cat gets there, other times he can't. You keep the cat engaged. Okay, so women are like cats. Okay, so at some point they need to feel, okay, they could be getting this from you, they could be getting sex from you, they, they want it, they could be getting, oh no, he's taking it away, I need to chase more. I need to chase them more. If they feel that they can't ever get it, there's no point of chasing, they lose their value by chasing. They don't want to keep putting themselves out there only for you to reject them. Okay, so at some points you accept, at other points you kind of reject. Okay, but let's go back to the verbal escalation ladder. A few things you guys need to do. You write down your ladder, the different levels. You write down your releases. You understand at some points the higher you go up, the more you potentially want to release. At other times, if you just want to build tension and you want to just work or practice with not ever releasing, then you don't release. You let it simmer and see what happens. Now, the next thing we're getting into is the nonverbal escalation ladder. Okay. So, what's very important, firstly, go. you look at GPS, genuine, playful, sexual, these are the three vibes that you can be in, these are the three vibes that a girl could be in. Okay, the, one of the biggest reasons guys struggle with communicating sexual intent is because they try to do it under the playful vibe. They'll be having fun, oh, haha, ha, you, you're super cute, you're super sexy. Like, you're super sexy for a blonde. You know, I would actually, I would kiss you. You have such kissable lips. Okay, that is done under a playful way. Why? Because you can't handle the tension. You're scared of the tension. So you're trying to, um, because you're so scared of the tension, you're doing it in a playful way because then it takes the tension away. The thing that kills sexual tension, destroys it, is laughter. Laughter kills sexual tension. Okay? That's why when you're creating a lot of tension and she's giggling and she's laughing, she's breaking it. But that's a sign of submission. That's good. You don't want to submit because it's a beta quality. It's a low value quality. Okay? If you keep submitting, you're submitting to her she has all the value okay so you don't want to be the one joking around continuously while you're trying to build sexual tension because your sexual tension then isn't being built okay so what does this look like you either do it in genuine or you do it in sexual okay so basically if i'm going up the ladder instead of saying like um <laughs> you know what you're the you're the most sexy girl in this venue Okay, um, you're the most sexy girl in this venue, but we would never get along. Instead of saying that, you just want to be a little bit more, you, you, you want to really destroy the, the playfulness and be like, you know what, I have to tell you something. I find you super, super sexy. But we'd never get along. Okay, I'm breaking it in playful. Why? Because the playfulness is also helping me break it. Now, you don't always have to break as in playful, but it's a good way to first start learning. Um, so you need to understand there's a big difference. Guys will often, I see them trying to practice this, but they're trying to hide behind their insecurities, their, their fears. So they will go right up and they'll be saying things like, you know what, you have such kissable lips. I'm thinking of kissing you right now. <laughs> okay, so you do that. I mean... There might be some tension being built because she can still hear the line, but you, it's, it's still very weak. Rather, and again, what you can do, you, you go from vibe to vibe. You go from playful, maybe we're having fun. Oh my God, you look like a teacher. Are you a tortoise? What, whatever you, you're saying to her, okay? All these cold reads and <laughs> push pulls and stuff. You're saying all these things. You look like a teacher. You're too young for me. You know what? And now you change vibes. So it's very fun and friendly and funny. Like, you look like a teacher, oh my God, we'd never work, um, I'm too old for you, you're too, uh, you're too much of an accountant for me, like, uh, I'm, uh, whatever, you look like a um, skydiver. Let me tell you something. I think you are super, super sexy. Okay? You change the vibe. You are responsible. So, again, what's very important, and this is from a more advanced perspective, if you know that you're going to be trying to build sexual tension, don't come from such a high point. You're not telling her, 
you know what, you're the finest, friendliest, you look like an accountant, are you a tortoise? And then you just switch drastically into a sexual vibe. It's too much of a switch. Sometimes the, the switch is uncalibrated. Okay, that's another discussion. But what you need to understand is you need to be able to say it in a genuine way. So um, the line, um, you're, you, uh, you're turning me on right now. You're giving me naughty thoughts. I can't imagine what I would do to you in the bedroom. Okay, say it in a very sexy, a very sexual vibe. Uh, you can say it's similar to that. You're very, um, you're turning me on, turning me on. Um, are you giving me naughty thoughts? I can't imagine what I would do to you in the bedroom. Turning me on, naughty thoughts. I can't imagine what I would do to you in the bedroom. Well, first start with the playful. playful. Yeah. Oh my God, you're inciting me on. I can't imagine what I would do to you in the bedroom. Okay. <laughs> now I'll go se sexual. Wow. Okay. Nice guy. Well, just go sexual. Okay. Um, King. Okay, yo, it's, it's good stuff, but there's uh, there's room for improvement. Let's go go into. <laughs> okay, um, so let's go into why and what what needs to be improved. So with the nonverbals, we've got the GPS. Now we've got, firstly, tone, volume, and eye contact. So the volume. <coughs> When you, the more sexual you're going, the volume is going to go down, okay? So instead of, like, this is generally the way the volume that I would be talking to a girl in, this type of volume, okay? You look like a teacher, you look like a tortoise, okay? Um, I said that to a girl last night, uh, but uh, <laughs> I can't remember, just a laugh. Uh, I just said if you're an animal, you'd be a tortoise. Um, but... Uh, so the volume so instead of going so you go from this volume to you go a bit softer okay that also creates a sexual tension so instead of you're very sexy or you're very sexy but the I'm thinking of doing naughty naughty things to you you're super super sexy and I'm thinking of doing crazy naughty things to you okay it really builds a sexual tension that's number one that's the volume okay the, the tone the tone of this, again, you don't want to, again, you, you want to try almost in your head have this sexual character. Okay, you want to think like you're seducing her and take it, um, like see it that way. Okay, so like almost just try to think of the character. So instead of saying, even instead of saying, you know what, you're super sexy and I'm thinking of kissing you. Okay, the volume is there, but you want to really be like, you know what, you're giving me naughty. Naughty thoughts right now. And I'm thinking of taking you to my bedroom and fucking you. Okay. Let's go. And the next part of it, the most important part of it, and this part, well, I would say these three can, if you want the magic pill to never using this verbal escalation ladder again, okay. Then you get good at these three. If you want the magic pill to never using t uh, tone and volume again, then use this one. Okay, so let's 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 go. What um, so tone we discussed, volume we discussed, eye contact. Now with eye contact, I've seen some very weird. Things with what when people are trying this okay I've seen extremely weird stuff so with eye contact firstly you need to understand the girl can she can tell everything about you by your eyes okay she the the most important thing that she can tell is the congruence 
You're saying these things. You're saying that I'm sexy. You're saying that I'm naughty. You're saying that you want to um, sleep with me. You're saying that I'm turning you on. I don't believe you. I can see it. I can see it in the expression. I can see it in the eyes. I don't believe you. There's something up. There's something wrong. And that's why the, what King has been getting a lot. Um, he's getting it less and less. But what he's getting a lot is he's saying the lines. And that's the first part. That's the first part to changing, to becoming more of that so-called player type guy. It's the first part, the lines. But then he's getting a lot of girls saying, and they actually say it in, almost in the same verbals, like, you're saying these things, but I don't believe you. You're saying that you want to fuck me, but I don't think you would. Okay? Why? Because it's not... Uh, the line is coming from a guy that should be very alpha. Okay? That line, like, um, I'm thinking of... You're giving me naughty thoughts. I'm thinking of taking you to the bedroom, bending you over, uh, bending you over. Okay? Whatever it is, that line is coming from someone that should be alpha. So if you're saying it... There's an incongruence there. Hold on, you're not the type of guy that should be saying these things. You're just not. Okay, now, for us, we become that type of guy from practicing all this stuff and gaming. Um, but it's amazing. You get amazing feedback from women. It's like, okay, I'm just not there yet. Okay, I'm not that type of guy yet. But the eye contact, firstly, so turn to the person, well, not just yet. We're going to practice it now. So with, with eye contact, you firstly need to understand, there's a few things you need to understand with eye contact. So, the first thing is, there's a difference between creepy eye contact and sexual eye contact. If you just, um, <laughs> yeah. okay, if you're just staring at the girl's eyes like this, I've seen so many guys do that, they're trying to really zone in. Um, if you just like stare at that, that's creepy. Okay, strong eye contact can easily become this guy is a creep, he's creeping me out, and I feel terrible around him. Okay, it's one of the worst feelings, like to be around someone that you perceive as a creep. Okay? And it's when guys, are, it often comes from guys using eye contact, and they're trying to make strong eye contact, but they're making the girl uncomfortable. So, and again, I can't tell you, look at this specific angle, or open your eyes at this degree. Can't tell you that. But what I can tell you is firstly, you need to understand you want to pretty much play around with this. You want to, you, in your mind, when you do these verbal escalations, increase the eye contact. Make sure that you lock the eyes with it. Okay, because that's when you're trying to increase the sexual tension. Now, if you do want to look away, most guys can't handle sexual tension, so they look away. They break. You want her to break, but if you do want to break because you think that you're making her uncomfortable, Look to the side. Okay, don't look down because that's a sign of submission. Looking down is what girls will do if they're attracted. They will giggle and they will look down because they can't handle, they're intimidated by you. Okay, so you don't want to take on behaviors of submission. Okay, you don't want to do that. So if you want to break eye contact and you're very scared, look to the side. Okay. Um, yeah, so... With eye contact, firstly, you want to have the mindset. There's a few mindsets that you can have. The first mindset is, I'm going to, I'm going to fuck you. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. It's just straight out, I'm going to fuck you. Okay, that's the mindset. That's what you're thinking, and you're looking at her through that lens. Okay, that's the first mindset. The second mindset is, and this is more of the mindset that I used to have, is it's almost like, I'm trying to verbalize it, it's almost like, I know, um, I know I'm making you attracted, what are you going to do? I want to see you, um, I want to see how you buckle, I want to see how you get attracted, I want to see how nervous you get, okay? I want to see, I know I'm intimidating you, I know you're attracted to me, what are you going to do? 